What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Runeterra Academy. It's, it's sophomore Saturday once again, baby. Once again, of course, I'm joined by the lovely TDS. How you doing tonight, man? What's going on, brother? It's been great. I've been celebrating, oh, well, almost celebrating the football results going around, so I'm happy, <laughs> and I'm excited for tonight's games. I actually, for the first time, uh, well, I don't want to say first time, but I got in the homework of actually talking with teams and getting to know some around, and I think these two teams that we're getting to see tonight are actually quite interesting, just from what okay. I've spoken with with some of the players. Okay, that being said, though, we do have tonight throwing down Nameless Asylum going up against, I believe it is, uh, To The Moon esports it's gonna be i mean like you you i mean you you just call it this time normally i'm the one who's saying that's gonna be a crazy <laughs> hype match right but this time around you saying it so i'm gonna I'm, I'm just believe you i'm gonna just believe you yeah i think we may get three games i'm, I'm going oh, to call it i think okay. we may get three games it, it will be the first time if i'm not wrong here we have we have had two 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 outs already so maybe the first three game series that we get would be entertaining to see that would indeed be very interesting yeah no absolutely so far it's really just been two always stomps and so i mean hey Hey, if you say it, bro, I'm a like I said, I'm gonna just believe I'm gonna follow you on this one. Okay. It should be a very interesting match to say the least, though. Both of these teams are looking to pick themselves up the dub today. That being said, we're just waiting a little bit still for them to, to get into the draft. That's why we were a bit late. I do believe there we go. It has started okay. indeed. So honestly, let's just get right into it. Let's not keep these people waiting. All right. So that being said, now a nameless asylum has gone two and two so far, while uh TTM is one and four. So Already, Name of Asylum is looking like I would say maybe somewhat stronger in comparison to TTM, but I mean, that doesn't necessarily mean too much. But already, we do see uh, the Zeri and Jarvis Bands coming out. They're really not wasting any time today. Yeah, they really want to jump into the game, into the match. And I quite like this, especially because there's a couple of champions that you pretty much have to ban away from certain mm -hmm. teams. We do have the picture as well. So, overall, I feel like just normal bands that we really should see coming in this particular matchup. Hmm. Now, with the Graves, another jungle ban, potentially. So, a, a lot of attention towards uh, Nameless, uh, Nameless Asylum's uh, jungle. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for absolutely no surprise that the Jarvan was the first thing that gets taken off the board. Because, uh, I mean, Nameless Asylum, I don't need to say how much Jarvan is picked. It's the most picked jungler, actually, from Backslash LOL. So, yep. really no surprise there with that being kind of taken out. Same with the Graves, as well. And now, we are going to see the final pick coming out from TTMP. Let's see what they opt to take off the board here. Well, normally you see Corky mm -hmm. uh, from this side, maybe the Kaelin, but Senna taking away. And Senna is a champion that has risen so much in priority, so it's not surprising to see it coming down right now. I feel like I, I would still take the Kaelin over the Senna, but I feel like she's beginning to showcase that she can be in that super high power level that in, in the AD mm -hmm. carry category. And first big buy, I'm not against the buy, I'm against the buy getting first picked because mm. i feel like as a jungler it's not the highest of priorities but in this kind of level i don't want to say in this kind of level cindy in these particular matchups around this elo you typically see much more comfort instead of just immediate power picks and i feel mm. like buy fits that much more than just normal champions like the ezreal for example yeah absolutely ezreal being the first pick coming out from to the moon are gonna go ahead and also be able to double pick so maybe we see the support already coming out but then again i'd be surprised if they decide to just Ins to pick the entirety of the ball, and we're gonna have to see if maybe they want to respond with the jungle pick instead. I mean, is that though they are really and they are oh. indeed, yep. So they're gonna go ahead and pick up the fiddle sticks. Okay, that's hmm. it's gonna be interesting to see how they're able to pilot that one. I think if I'm not wrong, I had a fiddle sticks on Thursday for the AG's protector sleep, uh -huh. and it was interesting to say the least. Like, I feel like at the at the start it didn't do anything but when it found the right <laughs> angles it just felt so amazing so against by who is not particularly the most aggressive of junglers early on in, in my opinion and even when she begins to ramp up effectively like fiddlesticks can kind of follow her up and the fear is going to work marbles especially for just her single target abilities that you can kind of stop or meddle with with the fear of a fiddlesticks yeah, absolutely. A lot of shutdown is going to be able to kind of come out of that. That being said, though, we do see that the Vayne and Leona were picked already from the side of Nameless. So they're going to go ahead and pretty much, let's see, lock in from that bot lane. And they're going to follow it up with a Nautilus as well. Okay, so already Nautilus and Vayne, uh, not Leona and Vayne, going into Nautilus. And Ed, how are you feeling about that one? 
Talking specifically about the bot lane matchup, like I always think that Leon is a little bit more favored to that of the Nautilus, not because of Morsi's here or anything like that, but just the innate tankiness that the Leona has just feels so much superior to a lot of the other engaged supports. And I, I don't quite like the Leona Nautilus at this point right now. I feel like there's better options. But mm -hmm. if you're going to go for an engaged support, I feel like you, you typically opt for the Leona and Nautilus is just the answer because it's what's left up. In kind of that regard, but it can still work out really well. You have the point and click CC with the ultimate that can work marbles against the Bane. And if you're able to lock the Bane up, it's easier to follow up with the Fiddlesticks, with the Ezreal, and with whatever else that it gets picked up. One thing that I want to point out about these bot lanes, by the way, is that both supports, uh, these two teams have in common that both supports really do like much more this tankier playstyle than going for enchanters. I feel like Sorak is a pick that we're never going to get in the uh, from these two particular bot laners, so hmm. it, it's just a, a little thing that I learned by talking with them. Hmm. That being said, though, just coming back to that bot lane, right? It's really like you were saying, right? Vayne and Leon, it's just an aggressive kind of combo to go yeah. into. And honestly, what better way to match aggression than with aggression? So obviously pulling out the analysis. That being said, though, the Akshan and Corky bands coming out from Nameless here. I'm not sure if those were... Are, were those targeted? Maybe you can give me a bit more insight it on that. It has to be mid lane. I, I, it has to be mid lane, particularly much more so because I feel like in the top lane from TTMP, Mm. They, it, it's not like they go for this kind of much more pokey Jace cannon style of champions. Instead, much more bruisery kind of champions, I feel like, would be much more towards their playstyle. So I feel like this is much more going towards the mid lane. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the quirky much more so, but the action as well. Mm -hmm. And the answer is the Vagar. I really like the Vagar in this particular meta. I feel like it just feels so strong. It has so much way of playing. And its CZ is so easy to pair up with a lot of the champions in the game. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the Scale Ooh. King himself really big are that. The answer to that will be, though, the Azir. Okay, and not a lot of times that you really see Azir anymore coming out in the mid lane, even though he's such a strong pick if he is in the right hands. Yeah, I don't feel like it's a bad meta, or I don't want to say it's a bad meta or anything like that for Azir. It's just that I feel like his playstyle does require quite a good hang of the champion. And... You you do have to understand how to play around its matchups and its play style overall with Azir. So that's what we don't quite really see this year because Corky and Victor seems much more reasonable to use and much more easily easy to understand in some instances. But mm -hmm. now looking at the top lane, it's going to be Kale against Whoa. the set, and this is something that talking with um, talking with some of the play with one of the players from TTMP, they did say that Kale was a champion that their top laner quite likes to play. So mm -hmm. this is going to be the first stage that we're going to get with the KL top lane, I think, in a while. And against that said, I'm not sure if it's the best of matchups, but if she gets time to scale, this composition from DTMP has quite a strong scaling uh, advantage. Yeah, not only that, and also just the amount of CC that's going to be coming out from them, right? Yep. You've got the Vagar, just Event Horizon Cage, which can be paired really nicely with the Fiddlesticks Ultimate, right? Just fearing them into those edges of the cage. You've got that point-and-click stun that we were talking about with the Nautilus ult that will come out. Just overall, I mean, it's just a, a nasty-looking team. And once Kale reaches that 16 mark, oh lord, if you get stunned once, you might just be done. Yeah. And the damage is not laughing matter. And a thing to point out, even though there's a Leona set on a buy, those aren't quite the tankiest of champions, particularly Leona is going to be on the tankier side, but because she's a support, she's not going to be on that budget of a tank. So mm -hmm. surviving the amount of damage that is on TTMP side, it's going to be actually hard for the side of, of Nameless Asylum. And I feel like if they ever misstep, like anyone can just get bursted out. Maybe set a little bit less thanks to the shield, the, the Haymaker. Yeah. But apart from that, I feel like everyone else is just an easy target to get immediately destroyed if they get locked up by the Z from TTMP. Yeah, absolutely. That being said, though, also when it comes to the side of Nameless, they also have very good kind of potential to sort of catch out the members of TTMP if they step out, right? You've got Vi just dashing in, the cease and desist as well, just becoming unstoppable and just, you know, throwing them down. You've got Azir with the ultimate able to knock like any set amount of champions back into sort of the back line to just absolutely wreak havoc on them. And then set as well with the showstopper, right? If you are able to kind of pull a flank off, maybe showstopper him kind of away from the rest of the team, if you want to, let's say, uh, focus out like the Ezreal or something like that. But uh, yeah, no, it's, it's going to be interesting. That being said, though, looking at the bot lane itself, right, I'm a little worried that the Leona is going to be struggling a bit going up against into the Ezreal, right? Because already we know kind of Leona, right? Level two, that's really kind of when you want to start you know, getting aggressive and going in there the moment you hit that, right? But it's like yeah. you hit that Zenith blade. If Ezreal can time a nice little arcane shift, you really just 
you got a bit of a problem. And um, if you're even more unlucky, you just got Ezreal kind of poking you down. You hit level two, but you're already like half HP and there's just nothing you can do. And they're kind of stuck in this limbo where you're under your own turret and you really can't do much. Yeah, for Leona, Leona has to play, I don't want to say safe, but accordingly to the situation that she's presented mm. with the Ezreal on the Nautilus. Because you cannot just go haywire with the Zenith Blade and try and hit it as much as possible. You have to play with the range of the Ezreal, you have to play with the hook potential from the Nautilus, and you have to play, first and foremost, in, in my opinion, with what your Bane is capable of doing. I think that Bane is a champion that sometimes uh, you, you don't really value her early game potential and prowess with the damage that she can get. Yeah. But if you, with as the Leona, are able to play around that effectively, if you're able to even just lock down the Nautilus well enough or force something out from the Ezreal that you really don't want to force out as an Ezreal, then you can use that, the power of the Bane try and lock someone down like i feel like one of the important things in this ball lane is the lockdown power that they have bane and leona can set up so that they can just lock down a target and if bai is there the amount of cc is simply unescapable uh, uh, unescapable yeah from mm -hmm. the side of of the israel and the Nautilus. and i think that the leona has to play completely in mind with what the bane is capable of and playing towards her power points and her weakest points hmm yeah i feel that i feel that being said that we do just taking a look at the comps here itself what, what team are you what are you favoring here what do you think is gonna what do you think is coming out on top just looking at the comps themselves i like quite a lot ttmp's composition like even mm. though the kill is kind of a question mark for me because i feel like kale if, if kale gets way too much bullied like she's not going to achieve anything mm. but if she just reaches level 11 without much worries in her in her game then i feel like th this composition can just shine so effectively and mm. it's not like both teams have a huge tank that can really just walk in and aid the amount of damage that each of the team has so just based on that i feel like ttmp's composition can really pull it off uh, between the mid game and the late game yeah no i definitely feel that as well right you just got so many like scaling beasts really coming out on the side of ttmp right? and i feel like we're most likely going to see give me a cup twice on that fiddlesticks probably kind of prioritizing getting into that top lane as quickly yeah. as possible trying to get not hope ahead as quickly as possible that way you know he doesn't have to worry but you can just be like okay you have fun top you play with the set and you just keep on getting fed while i can kind of move into that mid and bot lane try and get uh not jackie love ahead on that ezreal that way you can start you know doing a whole lot of damage and then sort of kind of snowball from there while on the side of nameless i kind of feel like maybe we'll see the vi head down early try and get faulty as like kind of like online as quickly as possible right because i mean this was like we were saying before if you underestimate those silver bolt procs like you yeah. are in for a world of, like a world of hurt doesn't even do it justice you are just you're gone you're in that gray screen before you even know it yeah the the main thing that i may see that we may see with the b though is maybe one little gang towards stopping to shut mm -hmm. down the the uh, kale mm. and then or just make the set's life easier in, in that sense where he can just threaten the kale almost every time and then like you're pointing out just trying to continuously go towards Baldwin and get this Bane as far ahead as possible. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It's gonna be, hey, it's gonna be interesting to see. And uh, the only way to really find out if these comps are gonna work or not is to just get on the Rift itself. So we'll throw it to a short break. And then when we are back, we will be on the Rift for game number one. Don't go anywhere.
All right, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. We are on the rift for game number one. All right, so overall, nothing too aggressive going on here just yet. Both teams, a little bit of respect. You always like to see it, right? No five man rolls going over, going crazy. Just a little bit of a lineup here, kind of stare down the enemy a little bit. Yeah, I don't think I, I don't think we've yet had a level one, have we? I don't I don't think so, honestly. But we got to see that. Like some some teams got to bring that. Yeah, Come on. someone has to do it. Probably the team that is uh, unbeaten should do it. I'm just saying the team that Hayes are bidding should do it eventually. But yeah, today we're not getting that. It's just a typical line of scrimmage, which realistically for these two compositions, I think that the TTMP composition could potentially go for it with the amount of CC that they have. But at level one, you probably don't want to go for the CC abilities, <laughs> in my opinion. Mm, yeah, I know. I feel that, definitely. So overall, it's looking like we're going to be a, a double bot lane start here, which, I mean, kind of goes into what we were talking about before, right? Both junglers kind of kind of path their way into that mid lane, then move up to the top, trying, obviously, on the side of uh, DDMP to get not hope ahead and well, really to counter that sort of from the side of Nameless with uh, Ilias moving into that top to try and get Cake 2 one 3 ahead. Yep, that would be the most ideal. I feel like the side from Nameless Asylum needs to try and get the early game going as soon as they can particularly with the spy because if she's really strong like she can just walk into people and kill them that, yeah. like that's how effective actually spy can be early on in the game but if she gets set behind she's uh, essentially just the worst leasing <laughs> that's true though i could i could definitely see that one that's true could indeed be a worse leasing so definitely uh Elias isn't gonna want that one to happen so we're gonna have to see how we decide to kind of move around this so far looking like a full clear coming out though from both sides with uh give me a cup twice already on as well so he will be in that top side a little bit sooner oh. and looks like he'll be able to gang okay already is he coming out though that's nice to see Bergen. but i don't know if that was the right move the late night coming out of bergen needs to be careful here faulty gonna go ahead and just try and tank whatever he can bergen is gonna get out of that one alive and that is ignite down but now bergen is incredibly low that was the thin line that you have to thread as the Leona, but Bergen taking it to a whole other level because Indeed. that was so immense already at level two no. with your being so far away. Oh, Inferno. Okay, Inferno just like, he does not care, bro. <laughs> the soldiers are just spearing him in. He's like, eh, yeah, it, it, it tickles a little bit. Trust his teleport a little bit too much. <laughs> exactly. He does indeed. Oh my god. Now I don't oh already looking though. He is got the he is running the Predator. So that is gonna be interesting to see right at Predator Vagar. It's not something I love that. too often. I hate it. I hate that when you hit that sound, <laughs> bro, and you see see this little tiny thing waddling down the lane to you, and then next thing you know, you're just stuck in a cage. There's no worse feeling than that. And also what not mean, that's love. great. <laughs> I, I love being able to do that. <laughs> I'm sure you are, but when you're on the receiving end, maybe not so much. That being said, though, also looking at not Jackie Lover, he did bring out the, uh, the not the exhaust, the cleanse. I, hmm, I, I don't feel that's super necessary, right? You have your arcane shift already, which will get you out of most tight spots and kind of allow you to not get hit by any of these, uh, the CC coming out from the side of Nameless. But honestly, it's not even necessarily that much where I would have felt like uh, cleanse was worth it. I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? I think cleanse can work out if, because I, I'm not sure about this interaction, but if it can help you take away the bio ultimate. If it does, I can see the merit there. But if not, I think you you benefit much more from having maybe the exhaust to uh, stop the, the die from killing you, or just the bane if she goes way too far forward. I feel like that would have been more much more useful. Oh. Yeah, indeed. Speaking of going too far forward, Bergen did go a little bit forward. And honestly, that E coming up from Faulted might have not been oh, the, the best counter. move. That being said, though, it is a counter indeed. They like to come out a bit. Oh, the bait. It's not going to be enough, though. The bait came out indeed, trying to at oh, least get no. this kill on Beat Monkey. But no, sir, you get beat into the ground tonight. Faulte is going to go down, and that's first blood going into the hands of Not Jackie Love. Yeah, the bait into the bait from each support, trying to th to make the opponent think that they are taking a really good fight when it wasn't in reality. And it just works out so well for TTMT. Fiddlesticks finding a really nice advantage. Oh, wait. Indeed, and also a nice advantage fine. coming out from Elias. Yeah, should be fine there. It's going to take quite a bit of turret shots. You need to be careful here. The thumbs up coming out. Not hope he, he was looking for something there, but Cake213 is going to be there to back his boy up just in case. That was a dangerous little engage there. Yeah, that was risky to pull off and if they think that maybe they can pull it off i feel like you're just really dreaming positively about that <laughs> kayla is level five you don't have any form of c of good lockdown apart from the uh, the face breaker from the set even just a by a uh, face breaker i think it's called 
Uh, yeah. it, it's not a good enough lockdown because it just sets you up in place. Like, you're, yeah, you're stunned, but in place, so it's not that bad. But getting that kill would have been re a really positive sign for the sign of, of Nameless Asylum. Sadly, it doesn't work out. And the tempo now is just going in advantage of TTMP. They are able to pull off the play in bot lane. The Fiddlesticks is keeping up his farming uh, his farming timings really well. He's ahead of the bike. And the bot lane realistically doesn't need to do anything. Look at this huge wave that he's going to crush. It's going to crash when the Ezreal arrives to lane. And uh, Bitmonkey Chick is doing a really nice job also of just locking the wave in place so that the Ezreal doesn't even lose that much. So overall, great way of monopolizing the gold in the map. And great way of just not losing anything all around the map. The only way that it can go bad is this uh, Baker dying here, but no, yeah. not happening. Yeah, it shouldn't happen there indeed. That being said, though, first drag is down on the map. And give me a cup twice is nowhere nearby. So this should be a free first dragon going into the hands of Nameless. That would just be in a cloud drake. You know, it's, just, it's yeah. not the end of the world. Probably the worst first rate to get, <laughs> but it also ensures that at least you're not getting the soul. So if the side of Nameless Asylum does a, uh, does a good job of securing dragons early on, they can at least look at that as a win condition, right? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a good... Now you're pretty much guaranteed, right? You get a decent soul, if not, like, a so, you know, somewhat decent. That being said, though, the next dragon... Uh, dragon? Oh, God. No, it's just kidding. <laughs> the next dragon coming out is going to be the Ocean Drake. So that means we'll either be getting the uh, the Mountain Inferno or, who knows, maybe even a Hextech Soul. I would, have li I would like Hextech Soul because it allows... For Leona and Seth to get towards the backline without having to risk to risk quite a lot. So I think that for the composition of this Asylum, the Rift would benefit them quite a lot. Hmm. But in terms of just pure damage, I think obviously the Inferno is great. And if I'm looking at TTMP side, I think they would benefit a lot from the Mountain Drake, hmm. getting yeah. the extra resistances. Yeah, definitely. Gonna be interesting to see which one we end up getting. We'll have to wait another four minutes to find out when the next dragon spawns and it's most likely taken out. Who knows, maybe we'll have to wait even longer. That being said though, just overall, it is certified chill time right about now. Not a lot yeah. really going down, just some farm and trade and every now and then in the waves here. You see the waves are pushed in quite heavy on the sides here of Nameless. Yeah, just really just some trading coming out here. RJ Hoffy's soldiers doing the work for him. But we do see maybe this is going to be one of those long Kong ganks coming out here from Game of Cup twice. Going to bide his time. And yeah, here comes the minion wave. So if this is played correctly, might just see something come out here. Now he does have the ultimate. So who knows what's going to happen? He's also ahead of the buy a little bit in terms of farm. So she, mm -hmm. he can spare this kind of place a little bit. And I think they know that the buy stops it. So if they want to force this play or even just a dive, I think that they can pull this up right now. Yeah, if they didn't know that, they know for certain as he was in fact spotted out by not hope. And my God, give me a cup twice, bro. He is just, this is, this is like, this is art, honestly. He's like okay. not moving, bro. Yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's not disconnected. <laughs> Dude, he's just role playing as the scarecrow, bro. Like he's just doing his thing right now. This is really long. Like, I feel like I'm <laughs> fine with this kind of play when you have a good timing but you're just wasting quite a lot of time and the pacing that you had previously is kind of getting screwed over like all oh, your camps already up you're not really doing anything with this advantage the drake is not even up so it's not like you can go for that drake so overall it's just giving map tempo away yeah he's now running away but <laughs> wait no, he's coming back <laughs> <laughs> he's coming back and he's speaking of coming back elias has once again come back to the top lane gonna hit without the cc and assist onto not hope so much damage coming out but not hope once again we'll be able to escape under the turret actually looking to maybe go on the offensive here okay i was about to say you gotta be careful there don't wanna don't wanna do anything you're gonna regret but we'll get out of that one alive yeah, and a little bit of miscommunication from the top lane and the jungle because Cake just run into a different... Oh, oh, here comes the ultimate coming out, though. The Crow Storm, so much damage coming out. And down goes Falte, but the turret doing a lot of damage. The Ignite comes out as well. Give me a cup twice. Should make it out of this one alive. He will indeed, and that will be the double kill. Okay, it took them, I think, <laughs> at least a minute for that play to work out. But it works out in the end, right? They get the double yeah. kill. They get two kills onto the Fiddlesticks, and it's another play for the Ezreal. This Ezreal is getting quite ahead in terms of gold, like already 800 gold ahead just in terms of, uh, of plates and farm. So really nice how they are feeling this, but also really importantly, they are putting this vein so far behind so early on. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, already has that sheen, so it's going to be doing a whole lot of damage as we just saw there as well, right? I mean, you literally, they jump under the turret and it's just like nothing happened. They just get absolutely yeah. shredded. That being said, though, Bergen 
looking to put on a little pressure there. Not Hope does have this wave kind of shoving in, so this might be a good time. Maybe we'll see Elias try it a third time around. Third time is always the charm. Maybe we'll see him head up into that top lane as Not Hope doesn't have his ultimate at the moment as he did have to burn it the last time around. Yeah, and now uh, Not Hope is able to harass a little bit more Cake because of the ranged advantage that KL does have. And the fact that so many ganks have gone so wrong for the side of Nameless Asylum means that the, the KL can play a little bit much more confident. Like, she knows that she can play effectively, she can outplay, and that on the other side of the map, the team is winning. So it's not like even if you die, you're losing. Yeah, absolutely. And we do see Mimal Falta trying to close that gold gap, right? Getting that blading now only four left to go however in comparison <laughs> there's only two plates left on their turret yeah sure they get beaten up quite a bit and yeah we're just really seeing this harass coming up from not hope kate can't even step up to the wave even if he wanted to he's gonna have to wait for it to go into the turret and uh not hope just gonna take a nice little back yeah and i think it's about time we see alia trying to go towards spotlight they are pinging it so i feel like they they, they are going to go for that, that play but it's time that they try to play around this spot side of the map Oh, yeah. give me a cup twice. Yeah. He's waiting for the ultimate. Twice. Indeed, waiting for the ultimate. And there we go, channeling oh, it, looking no. to move in a double crow storm fear, followed by the ultimate from Beat Monkey Cheeks. It's gonna hit Elias, but they're gonna opt yeah, to bye, go bye. for Bergen first. Goodbye, just gets absolutely shredded like it was nothing. The timing of that play was so good. They are playing around not only vision control, but just playing around their opponents, not really knowing what to do to respond correctly. Like, TTMP has gotten so many good plays out already in this game, and it's been Nameless Asylum trying to respond accordingly, trying to pull up a play, but just simply being always on the back foot of that potential play. Oh. Oh, the hook just barely missing, but it's gonna flash, but hit him with the Sharima shuffle to push him under the turret. And RJ Offy will flash just to be safe oh, to get out of that one. Meanwhile, Falte looking for a little bit of a 1v1 here, trying to see a little bit of ADC superiority. Oh, has no idea that that control order is in the way. Thank you. It's he knows now. Out. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but just now, looking after looking at that uh, at that control word being taken away, look at the vision control on bot side. There's two pink words yeah. inside of, of bushes. There's vision inside of the enemy jungle. And they also have vision to cover for topside. So it's not like you're at risk of almost anything around the map. Yeah, absolutely. We did see not hope. Oh man, just the harass coming out is disgusting. That range that he has doing so much damage, just nothing Kate can do. He can't quite close the gap. And plus with that lethal tempo as well, that extra attack range, it's just going to make it harder and harder for Kate to get in there. Yeah, and the fact that if he hits that face breaker, you do get chances to be able to threaten this kill quite a lot. But Not Hope has been playing really well around the range of that face breaker and has been able to deny just the set getting as much damage as possible in comparison, dealing as much damage as possible to that set. You will now know that Give Me a Cup twice is there. Oh no. <laughs> oh lord. Fault and a bad spot. Oh, no. coming up from you, Monkey Cheeks. Can they make something happen? Ignite coming out as well. Hit him with the Whoa. slow as well. And he should be gone. He Check is indeed. But Beat Monkey Cheeks will unfortunately go down as a price. They will go one for one. So at least you don't take a absolute L there. I don't and know what this play. Yeah. It's about to be a bit of a scuffer in that top lane. Oh, Elias no. looking to go in, but the Crow Storm is up once again. It said they're going to switch targets onto Cake and take him out. Elias is gone next. That's a double kill. Very nicely done. Great target acquisition. Realizing that, hey, let's just take out Cake first and then move on over to Elias. Take him out as well. And Bergen has to watch as his brothers fall. Yeah, Bergen cannot do really much. That was a 3v2. But the problem with that play is that the set wasn't... Uh, I think the set didn't teleport. Uh, he tried, maybe? But yeah, he, he the teleport is on cooldown, so maybe he did teleport back. But that play was simply not going to work out. They knew of the position of the Fiddlesticks because they have a ward on top side on the second push that is just uh, getting cleared. And that ward tells you that the Fiddlesticks is there. You don't have to pull that play. You can just let the set back, reset, and maybe look for another play uh, somewhere else. Oh. It does. RJ Hoffy, though, with the sidestep of the True Shot Barrage. So oh, looks like another one coming out. Of okay, Lil Shurima shuffle under the turret. Yo, this man is big brain. And he is going to get that kill. Outplayed, out skilled, outbrained. Dare I say, he's going to be feeling good after that one. Yeah, really not showing the bird brain that we typically see from a super player. So really nicely played by Roger. <laughs> he, was, he just missed the emote right there. Oh, wait. Oh, no fault, oh, though. Stun, Looking though. to get a little bit of extra kill. Yeah, gets the stump, but unfortunately pushed him into the bush. So didn't have vision on him anymore. And that really screwed him. And so now Jackie Love going to be doing a lot of damage. But Bergen, he's like, yo, did you just touch my boy? You might have to pay for that one. Oh, the solar flare gonna oh, miss. The Venus play will connect. They'll follow up by the Q. Can the Vi dash get in? No, cannot. Not Jackie Love. Arcane shifts under the turret. And we'll get out of yeah. that one alive. 
the level dip, the item dip, and some other dips that are right now in the bot lane is quite damning for the side Indeed. of Namely Asylum. Good yeah. attempt. Yeah, good attempt. Was looking to make it top diff there, but nothing quite got to come out of that one. RJ Hoffy with the teleport as well to back his boy up. That's always nice to see a little defensive TP coming out. Yeah. Hey, as long as the set doesn't die, I feel like that's a worse teleport, right? Even yeah. if it looks bad, like, it's better to die, uh, to not die. <laughs> it's better to just die. Just get it <laughs> no. over with. Just get it over with. <laughs> we all die someday. Just get it over with. And end their misery. That's it. Exactly. <laughs> that, speaking of the misery, just look at Cake, dude. He pops the Q, but so much damage just comes out. Nothing he can do there. Using the Iron Chain Whip to try and clear oh, the wave. Hope. Might not be enough. Not hope. Looking oh. to do a lot. Of but the face breaker with the showstopper and Cake is like, get out of my top lane. That is an outplay and an overconfident top laner trying to think that he can pull off the kill, but no, you need to respect the set. Vayne is dead here. Yeah, oh, wait, Vayne, the cancel? Virgin, though, hits that cancel. Shoot Shop Rock does connect a lot of damage, but Elis, look at that. Cease and assist going out to not Jackie Love. Unfortunately, Beat Monkey just will go down yes. it so well. He gets yes, well. That's a double kill given. Very nicely done. That's what you want to see. Funneling that money into 100%. fault his hands. Yeah, and finally we see, I think, the first or second gank from the buy towards bot lane. It works out, yes, they lose the turret, but gold in the pocket of the bane. That's completely important, and it's a shutdown nonetheless. Oh, yeah. oh my god, the crow storm. This man is everywhere you don't want him to be. And the ultimate coming out from Inferno will seal the deal and take out Elias. Yeah, and the play that worked out so well sadly gets a little bit countered by that, double, by that kill from Give Me a Cup twice. Still... It's kind of the nightmare that you have to live with the Fiddlesticks. That's kind of yeah. the problem. If you're not careful about the position, that Fiddlesticks can just destroy you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we keep seeing it right now. I mean, that cooldown on the ultimate is so low as well. We just keep seeing him have it up constantly. And he's just finding these great positions. They have so much vision, which allows him to kind of pull up these plays as well. Yeah. Exactly what you want to be seeing coming out from Give Me a Cup twice. Yeah, now the third dragon of the game going into the hands of TTMP. We saw the first dragon falling for the side of Nameless Asylum, but the the Phyllis has done a good job of taking advantage of the timings to go for that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I hope we'll have to burn <laughs> flash know. to get out of that one. That was not a good spot to be in. Yeah, if, if, if Kid doesn't flash you, you're just giving away another kill that shouldn't happen. <laughs> also, she's going for... She went for the shield, oh. though, so I feel like maybe this is going to be a much more 80 focused KL build with maybe the Blade of the Ring King and the like. Hmm. I mean, that's understandable as well. You already have the Fiddle Six here who is getting incredibly ahead, so can afford to go that Night Harvester. And you have just the Scaling Demon that is Vagar. So kind of want to, yeah, exactly. Kind of want to diversify those builds a little bit, get a little oh. ED into there. That way, uh, not Jackie Love isn't the only one building me. Yeah, trying to go for that play down there, not really achieving much. Ooh, oh, cake though. No flash. This time he is gonna get onto Not Hope. No flash indeed, followed up by the Solar Flare. Good night. Your time might oh. just be up popping the ultimate. Is it gonna be enough though? I think not, because Elias is there to follow his boy up. That be said though, in the mid lane, they will get a kill as well though. Down goes RJ Hoffy, trying his best to defend the turret with his life, but will pay the ultimate price. It was a flash play though, like Fiddle Six doesn't have flash and ultimate, which means that they oh Oh, ooh. ooh, okay. Flash dead to come out from now. Jackie Love there. Doesn't want to get hit by that Zenith Blade. Gonna just hit him with the emote. I think maybe that's why he's running cleanse in case he yeah. goes full monkey and, and just <laughs> dies like that. Exactly. Yeah, indeed. That was very close to say the least. Cake, meanwhile, has migrated down to this bot lane. Gonna try and pick up some farm there. Needs to really start farming up if he wants to kind of not necessarily get back into this game, but just kind of put himself in a position where he is a threat. Yeah, the problem is that he's not a scaling the kill ever. So you, yeah. you do need to have at least a little bit of an advantage or of an edge to be able to answer to this scale as effectively as possible. Yeah, definitely. So a little bit of gold will go a long way to do that. We do see that he pulled out the stride breaker there. Ouch. Needs everything that he can get in order to slow down, not hope, and get actually kind of close to him, close that distance and get on top of her. That being said, though, Bergen is just taking so much damage from not Jackie Love. Those mystic shots coming out with the Essence Reaver and the Man of Moon Age just doing so much damage. Yeah, this Ezreal is becoming such a pain. The ass for the side of <laughs> Nameless Asylum. Like, just the poke damage that he's dealing. But the fact that he already has the fully stacked Man of Moon means that he's just simply not running out of mana ever. Yeah, absolutely. Just can, can you just keep sending out those missions? Oh. That being said, though, they're going to be sending out some more cease and desist Bye -bye. here in the bottom lane. Goodbye. Going to hit him with the showstopper. Was that really necessary? Cake just like, I'm Maybe. finishing the job right here, right now. Takes him out. 
but for that, wait, the side of um, TTFB. They're getting that Baron buff. Yeah, yeah, they should get no that Baron. Knows. The only person that might have a slight Wait, suspicion is RJ Hoffy. They do know indeed. Let's see if RJ Hoffy can make something happen, though it's not looking very likely. Baron at one K, and no. that should be. Yep, that is the Baron going into the hands of TTMP. Uh, and that play on Baldwin was so good, but that was such a huge lack of simply understanding the potential from the enemy team. They are so far ahead. They have a Kale and an Ezreal that are really, really strong. They have a Fiddle Six that realistically doesn't take a lot of damage. So. Baron buff, but Baron potential is actually quite high for the side of TTMP, and they show it in that play. Not even a, an ounce of vision down in, in, yeah. in the whole river. They had just the the blue ward that only the Asir has, which means that you just have that only instance of vision, and they just get completely stolen under this under their noses essentially. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we saw that the far side alteration wasn't dropped until the Baron was at like 1.2k health. And at that point, yeah. it's a little too late already. Goes down, goes into the hands of TTMP, and they're sitting pretty in pink, pretty in purple, however you want to say it. That means that that is going to be a lot of siege potential on the side of TTMP, who definitely need to start getting some more picks to make sure that they don't kind of lose grasp on this game. Yeah, and the main problem with this Baron buff to me, much more so than just being able to switch and get uh, more gold and opening up the map more, is that it buys time for the scalings to get stronger. Oh! Ooh, not hope he's gonna have to buy himself some time with his ultimate, but I don't know if it's gonna be enough this season. This comes out, shield bow does get proc, but it will not be enough. No amount of healing will save you from your fate, will go down, and so will, however, that mid lane tier 2 is gonna go down as well, and Cake trying his best to defend that tier 2 in the bot lane. He's just getting poked out by this by this beggar. And this yeah. one is dead, by the way. Oh. Yeah, no, this tower not looking too hot right now. The solar flare does come out. It's going to buy the turret maybe a second more time, but that's about it. Cake looking to go in here. The same with oh, Ilya. Fiddlesticks. But here comes Fiddlesticks with the ultimate. Looking to do so much damage. Shield bow does get propped. Oh. Fault A needs to flash to get out of there. But there are those silver bow procs we were talking about. Doing a whole lot of damage. Trying to get kills here. But nothing quite going to come out of it. How did they just all survive that? Primordial Burst doesn't take out at least oh, one Mystic Shot. Should seal the deal. No. Not oh. quite going to find it though. Elias will live to fight another day. But I cannot say the same for Cake. Falte and Bergen. Oh, oh, oh. No, maybe not RJ either. Ah, no, he's just gonna dash. Yeah, and that that whole sequence of events was so random, in my opinion, for Nameless Asylum. Like they didn't need to go for that play at all. But if they are going for that, oh, Hoffy. No, Hoffy. Oh no, Hoffy in a bit of a bad spot here. Doesn't have Empress Divide. Is gonna be able to dash though. Very nice. Once again, we'll just barely get out of that one. Hoffy, just go back, man. Just find a safe space to recall. Please. Yeah, just run. You don't Dude. need to actually fight this. <laughs> yeah. Is gonna drop himself a little self constructed turret there in that top lane, but I mean, it's no match for not hope. There is no okay. hope with that. Yeah, okay, I think finally he can back. I think he will finally <laughs> be able to back. So, yeah, I'm not, not losing quite much, but I, I do want to point out now that we were laughing at Hoffy a little bit that that fight can happen if Hoffy's there. You're losing a lot of your damage not playing around Hoffy. And realistically, with the Emperor's Divide, he can set up so that the Fiddlesticks or the Nautilus are not a threat for the Bane. But when they went for that play like that, it just never... It just meant that the Bane was going to be much more vulnerable. He, she ends up dying immediately towards this Fiddlesticks. And she doesn't really find time to be able to out-attack in those teamfights. Yeah, absolutely. Also, I feel like there's really just a lack of anti-heal coming out as well. Right? You've got the Kale, you've got the Fiddlesticks. Maybe even the Ezreal, but it's like, just overall, there's no anti-heal, I don't think, even coming out yeah. from the side here of Nameless. That's at least something you kind of need to get on, whether that's just like one single Bramble Vest coming out from the set, or just one Executioner's Calling. Regardlessly, that's definitely something you want to be investing in, because we saw in that fight, right? Even though Vayne was dealing so much damage with those Silver Bolt procs, it just wasn't quite enough, always falling a little bit short. Yeah, now, <laughs> just with more completed items, maybe there's an opportunity for the side of... And name this asylum to maybe force a fight. They are now behind uh, just one Drake away from getting sold, and it's an infernal soul. So if you were dying previously, now you're dying even more. Yeah, okay. <laughs> absolutely. Okay. Speaking of that, that is indeed a bit of a dangerous position for him to be. He does have that hole breaker, so he can I don't like that quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, we've been seeing a lot of hole breaker just coming out recently, especially yeah. in Pro League, right? It is a pretty big item, and honestly, when you're this kind of like not necessarily behind, but you know, you are kind Wait. of on your own a lot. Speaking of being alone, though, not Jackie Love is on his own as well, though. Oh, no, he does get hit by the season oh, assist, no. and he's just gone. He even flashed, and it wasn't enough. He flashed, he cleansed, and he was still taken down. Ah, bad positioning, and he pays the price. 
he may be he may not be Jackalov, but that was a Jackalov play. Like, <laughs> that, that was the kind of thing I've seen Jackalov do a couple of times previously. And that is such an important pick because it not only solves a push potential, but it also enables now a little bit of freedom for the Bane to maybe farm a little bit more. They may look for a play here. I don't think they may get it. Yeah. Hmm. I don't yeah. think they get it. Nah, I don't think so. They definitely should have Unless... someone sent up into oh, maybe, maybe RJ Hoffy looking to make something having a lot of damage coming out. It's like we're saying, right? They need to be playing around RJ Hoffy, who is yeah. one of their like biggest damage dealers at the moment. That being said, though, oh, I just want someone to take out that top turret, man. It is so juicy. It's so low. Someone grab it, please. The minions will do it. Don't worry about the it. The minions, bro. Minions, <laughs> please get it done. <laughs> Oh, that being said, though, Baron is up in 34, so I would not be surprised if sooner or later, if we see a pick, we'll see one side looking to move in. And we already see both sides trying to get some picks here. The entirety of... Teleport um, coming in. Yeah, teleport coming in. Indeed, they're looking to take out Not Hope here. Has to pop its ultimate incredibly yeah, early. Yeah. I don't know if that was the move. He does a lot of damage, but it's not going to be enough. Will go down. Ultimately, even the True Shot Barrage couldn't save him. We're seeing pings coming out that the Baron is up in 10 seconds, and it's looking like they're looking to move there. Yeah, but I feel like they have enough time to respawn, and without the kill, you actually lose quite a lot of potential Baron damage. So yeah. it's not as threatening as it was previously. I think they may look for it once again, but it's not as risky this time around. Mm, definitely, we're seeing a lot of pings here. We got Beemon. They even have vision at this time. Yeah, yeah. This time around, they have vision, so they know that the side of TTMP are going to be up with that Baron. Look to maybe move in and counter Bergen stepping forward. Taking care of some vision here, but Beat Monkey Cheeks, he's like, hey, I'm I'm the big support here. You might want to back off. Yeah, he has the gold that Bergen and will would dream of having. He has two <laughs> items as an Nautilus. That's not yeah. typical. Yeah, no, absolutely. You got that Knight's Vow and the lock and making sure I'm I'm almost certain he's probably got that bound to uh not Jackie Oh Love. Inferno. Sure, oh Inferno in a bit of a bad spot can hit him with the Empress divide a little Sharima shovel, but not quite pushing him where he <laughs> wanted them to be. A lot of damage to soldiers hitting hard, but the primordial burst will go down though ultimately now it's just a Wait, full blown little Love. scuffle here not jackie Love in a bit of a bad spot beat monkey cheese getting hit hard by those silver rope procs will go not actually go down and into the masses goes give me a cup twice and goes into the ground as well and now not hope is on the run tp it in to try and help his team but too little too late but look at those winions in that mid lane though they're kind of pushing this thing out looking to get that inhibitor but the side of nameless is looking to get themselves this baron in return are you hearing what i'm hearing are you hearing the comeback signal? Maybe? Are we onto that potential comeback coming in? Like, yes, they may lose inhibitor in mid, but that's the easiest inhibitor to protect. Also, Infernal Drake coming up in 20 seconds. They need to rush towards the Infernal Drake. Azira has teleport so he can come in as soon as he wants. They need to rush it down before the Fiddle Sticks comes back. It's yeah. on the same time. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely need to get there. That'd be simple. The drag is coming Gold up. Dragon. Very, yeah, no, time, definitely time to go dragon here. It is up. It is live. It is free it for is the dead. taking. And <laughs> it is about to be dead indeed. Do not want that soul going into the hands of TTMP. Yeah. They will buy themselves another five minutes. Ah, Shusha Barrage coming in just a bit too late. Now, they did lose their inhibitor in mid lane, but it was, I feel like it was going to happen anyways. I'd, I'd rather you just lose the mid lane inhibitor and keep on gaining free gold. That, that is the easiest inhibitor to protect, the easiest place to protect because it's in the middle of the map. And instead, every advantage that you're gaining by taking those picks with the Baron buff now, with the Elder, uh, the Dragon denied. Oh, wait, Hoppy. Looking to maybe make something happen here. Nothing quite happen here. Hoffy, Hoffy, be careful. You can't be roaming yeah. alone nowadays. The jungle's a dangerous place. And he will back off. Nice to see. Almost running into his demise there if he had moved just a little bit further with his wave. So One but kill here. Yeah. This screws over completely nameless asylum. They, yeah. Nobody cannot die in a bad place. Absolutely. It, there, it's on a nice edge right now, to say the least, right? I mean, really, any fight can just turn the tides for either team at the yes. moment. Nameless have been doing a great job for themselves of getting back in this game, making a name for themselves, dare I say. And so overall, they just need to keep this pressure up if they want to stand a shot in this. They have been able to come back slowly but surely, so they need to be careful not to throw everything good that yep. they did away. The only problem is that there's still a really nice advantage that the side of TTMP has and their composition is really really good for picks as well they haven't used that as much but if they are able to get one good pick like they can do so much I yeah. really like this back kick by the way yeah absolutely okay just opting to go split push he's got the Baron he's got the hole breaker might as well send it into the bot lane get themselves some extra gold 
Yeah, and in, in terms of just protecting the turret, Zero has enough push or enough wave clear to just uh, stop potential. Like, unless he missteps really badly, like this. Oh no, he did indeed! Gets hit by the dredge line, gets hit by the ultimate, and he's gonna go down. Inferno does get taken pretty low, but it doesn't matter. The Crow Storm doing so much consistent yes. damage. He lays bad spot into the ground. He goes. Bjergen is next to follow. Oh, no. Primordial Burst bursts him to shreds. And just like that, they throw away all the good they just did. The TP does come out though because oh, Cake, Cake is just sending it into the base. Might see a bit of a base race. Oh, we'll have to see. The fear is just so long. Like There's it. nothing that he can do. Cake shoving as much as he can, but it doesn't matter. You're no match of the four man that's coming out. They cancel the teleport. No way. And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, to the moon esports, send it to the moon as well and take themselves this first game. I, I, why? <laughs> Huffy, you had one job. You just needed to say in front of the door. You don't need to do anything more. Just don't die. And you can probably get much more. Like, Cake was doing co the correct thing. He was split pushing with the whole breaker. Yeah. The, the game was stabilizing once again. And Huffy just gets taken over by an impulse to go and kill someone. <laughs> And he ends up paying the price. Yeah. It was cool. I feel like Nameless, if they don't go for that, they can take the game towards the Baron. If the they can play around now the Bane that is so far ahead on this year, there's a chance. There's a, an actual real chance for them to win yeah. the game. But greediness is something that everyone fa fails victim to. Yeah, absolutely. And they did this time around. We saw, right? We were literally saying, like, we were talking about mispositioning. And then we just see RJ Hoffy step just a bit too far forward. Yeah. It gets hit with the dredge line, gets hit with the Nautilus ultimate. It's just all over for him. He goes down, Falte goes down, Bergen goes down. Cake is like, yo, y'all got this, right, guys? Guys? And then it's like he tries to TP back, and he just sees all of a sudden his TP gets canceled <laughs> because your second Nexus turret just fell. And, oh, now your Nexus is gone too. And he, he even tried to bag by a minion <laughs> just to stop his back even. So nothing was going was working well for Cake at that point. But... I feel like Nameless, it was close. I, I do want to say yeah. that they did everything correctly to come back into the game. And I feel like it, the calls from, if I'm not wrong, it's the ball thing that does, that does those kind of calls in the later stages of the game. So they did a really nice job to try and pull the game back. Great picks, great timings to go for the Baron and the Dragon. Great yeah. comeback potential. It's just a little bit of a mistake that actually, if you change that, you have a lot of much, much more potential to come back into the game. So... Hopefully they can correct that and go into the second game with a different outlook and a different mind into how to play the game. On the other side, TTMP, you don't need to change much. You played really well around your bot lane. The Fiddlesticks was a great curveball. I feel like it's going to get banned, but if you can draft something similar, it can work really well to enable your game plan and enable your, your way of playing because I feel like it was going great until it wasn't. <laughs> absolutely yeah no i mean it was definitely a close match and honestly that's very promising so we might just yep. get that kind of like two one kind of gameplay here but we'll have to wait and see so we'll throw it to a quick break and then when we're back we'll be into the draft for game two don't go anywhere
and welcome back ladies and gentlemen we're back in this thing all right so game one definitely a close one to say the least anyone that's just joining right yeah. now i mean it was a first of all it was a banger to say the least but tdmp do come out on top at the end of the day with a very close match so like i was saying before it's definitely quite promising we might just be seeing a bit of an extended night tonight honestly i mean yep. do you feel like uh nameless have what it takes to get back in this thing or are they just done if they can showcase what they did to try and come back to the game, yes. Because I feel like their early game was, I don't want to say atrocious, but it was really bad. <laughs> like Some of the plays that they tried to pull up were always behind mm -hmm. what TTMP were pulling off. They were trying to respond in places that maybe didn't look quite promising. And their only really true shining light that I saw was uh, Huffy on the mid lane. So mm -hmm. if they can play their early game a little bit better without losing quite as much as they did, and then they can have really good calls in the later stage of the game, I can see them being able to pull back the, the this game. Because it's not like they are really bad, it's just that they just couldn't follow up correctly at the start of this match. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to see if they can look to improve themselves this time around. That being said, though, we did have them switching sides, and so the banning, picking and banning phase has begun already. We are going to see the same sort of bans coming out here, though. The Viego ban actually coming out from TTM. I'm kind of curious to see that, but... Victor and Zeri once again coming out from the Endless Asylum. Nothing new there. Honestly, maybe looking at me like they're saying no one really on TTM was the problem. Maybe we were our own problem and we just got to fix our own mistakes. It'll be surprising if there's not one single ban towards the previous composition. Not because, like you're pointing ah, out, yeah, I feel like is. the Fiddlesticks there was going to happen. Yeah. It's not particularly because it was impossible to play against the Fiddlesticks, but Fiddlesticks is such a... That's just annoying. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's such a, a, a niche champion that... If you don't play a lot against him, it can be bothersome. So that's why I was expecting to see the Fiddlestick span and why I'm not surprised by seeing it here. It does open the graves that we saw in the previous game, but German is also open. So we may see it getting picked this time around by the Nameless Asylum. That's true. That's true. We did kind of see that being one of the first things that was banned earlier on, but we will see Nameless Asylum actually picking up the Ezreal first time around. Taking it away from TTM. Yeah, <laughs> so but... trying to play with that. Yeah. I, ah, there I it is. yeah, there it is. It was so pretty, just was bound to happen. Now, I want to see what is the answer from TTM in terms of bot lane. There's a lot of champions still open. Caitlyn could be an option. Jean, there's also now Bane again, maybe in the counter matchup, in the opposite matchup from TTM to they, they want to play the Bane. So mm -hmm. I'm kind of interested in what they opt for. There, we may also see Kaisa with the new, much more just AP thread build, but it's inside the mm -hmm. Bane. So they th maybe the team thinks that it's an actually good matchup. It's just that it wasn't played effectively, or maybe they want to pair it up with another champion that can get much more value than the Leona. Yeah, definitely. And we do see TTMP actually opting to pick the veins. We just got the role reversal this time around. Both ADCs being like, yo, I'm going to show you how to play what you played, but play yep. a lot better, actually. We're going to have to see how that ends up working out for either side. And Zach actually being picked here for TTMP. Okay. So we I can, actually uh, quite like that. Huh. In like, the Graves top, perhaps? It can still be flexed towards yeah. Graves mid, but I, I feel like it, it'll be the Sack jungle and the Graves top lane. I do mm -hmm. like the Sack though. I think that it's one of the most undervalued junglers in my opinion because I feel like he has so much of a place right now in the meta. He has mm -hmm. so much good engage. He can threaten so much backlines. Maybe against the Ezreal, it, it can be a little bit harder because of the potential from Ezreal to just escape with the Arcane Shift. But it still can get so much value in team fights. He has a lot of CC, and he pairs up quite well with a lot of AD, uh, with a lot of supports, and with mid laners as well. Yeah, definitely. Camille as well, one of those kind of tried and tr true, trusted picks coming out here from Nameless Asylum are gonna go ahead into the next ban phase here once again. Corky being taken off the board there. Same kind of bans as we're seeing. So I have a feeling like maybe that uh, Fiddle Six will be the only ban. That's kind of new. Yeah, I, I, do, I, I do agree. I don't think we're going to get much more. Maybe we see the Kale just for fear because Cameo can still be flexed towards mid lane. But yeah, it's not going to happen. And now looking at the potential solo laners that are left in the mid lane with Corky and Asir now getting banned, I think that Baker is a ban that you have to take away as well. Unless you can play it from Nameless Asylum side. Mm, definitely, yeah. Azir going down though as well. They did not like RJ on that Azir. They were like, that was a little annoying. That was a little dangerous. Got a little too close to actually maybe clutching yep. up. Let's get rid of that just to be safe. And Ellen, yeah, okay, Nameless just going to take Lulu off the board. And with the final ban coming out here from TTMP, let's see what they opt with. 
I'm curious what they're going to take away. Because honestly, other than that, Azir, there weren't really too many threats coming out from Nameless Asylum. I'm not going to get rid of this intro. It was going to be either a, a safe mid laner that has been played like the Syndra or Rihanna, or the Vagar from the previous game because of the amount of just champions that are already banned in the mid lane. I don't think they attack the bot lane pool. I feel like if, if they want to pick Nautilus again, they can go for Nautilus. They opt now for the looks, which can still be a flex. Hmm. But I don't think it works quite well with the Ezreal as it works with other AD carries in hmm. the bot lane. It's going to be interesting to see. We're going to have to wait for that final pick to be certain. I'm not if it's going to be kind of flexed maybe into the mid like karma here. That would be interesting as well to see. We're going to have to wait and see TTMP really taking their time to pick here, really thinking things through, and they're going to hit Ooh. this lane. Okay. It has to be Swain support. I, I, I The last time I saw a Swain mid, I was still trying to learn the game. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I just don't expect that we see this Swain coming into mid lane. It's been so long. And right now, I don't think it's quite good in the mid lane, if I'm honest. Like, I'd rather take anything else. Yeah, Akali is a better option. So, it's yeah. going to be Swain and Bane support and Bane bot lane. That's Ooh. actually fun. That's going to be very interesting. A lot of interesting combos going to be coming out here with the Condemned as well from Bane. And we will most likely... I'm assuming we'll be seeing the Graves top and the Zax jungle. Yeah, I don't think you're trading that in, in in the top lane and jungle position. I feel like if you do send Zack towards the Camille, like she's just going to bully the Zack quite a lot. I feel like Graves at least has a better opportunity. Zack is not the best of matchups, but who knows? Mm. Maybe we see something random like that. But with that last pick in the Seraphine, it's going to be looks in the mid lane, Seraphine in the bot lane. I think Purse better with the s roll as well. And that also means that now you have quite a lot of shielding potential and a lot of defense potential for the Ezreal, for the Camille, for the Jarvan, but also good potential engage with the Jarvan, Camille, and the Surfing Ultimate. Yeah, definitely. Once again, kind of the team comp coming out from uh, TTMP, though, looking dangerous to say the least. Got a good amount of CC coming out with the Swain and the Zac, as well as all the Graves that can just kind of hit you with the blindness. It's going to be interesting to see how they can kind of play around this. But I will say this time around, the comp that's coming out from Nameless, I'm liking a lot more than in game one. Yeah, I feel like much more has more options. Doesn't feel quite shackled towards certain things. Mm. And I feel like if they can get aggressive in the early stage of the game, they will they will be able to get a lead similar to what the side of TTMP had in the previous game. So there, there's good potential here. They also don't lack in the scaling. So it's not like if they don't win the early game, they don't have options. But I feel like this time around, they have more versatility in terms of playing throughout the game. Mm, yeah, definitely gonna have to see how they do things around here. I, though we'll say though, Lux going into the Akali. How do you feel about that? I'm a little worried for this Lux. It can get bullied. Uh, the Akali, if the Akali ever gets potential to thread, it's also an immobile mage in the mid lane, so the Zac has a lot of windows to try and take advantage of. And mm. if she dies once or twice, like that laning phase may be <laughs> completely over. To not say she's essentially dead for the next ten minutes. Yeah, definitely it's going to be a little interesting to see how they're able to kind of pilot that, handle things. And that top lane as well, though, Graze into the Camille. I'm a little, I don't know, I'm a little worried here for uh, the side of Nameless if the Camille pick is going to be as effective going into the Graze here. What do you think about that, though? I don't think I've ever seen or I, I, I don't remember seeing the Camille getting picked to answer the Graves as far as I know. I think mm. that Graves should have a a good time pushing the wave he has the dash so it's not like he fears a lot the hookshot potential yeah and even if the camille takes the ignite like there there's graves that have taken something apart from teleport so it's not impossible to go for for just a, a fighting summoner on the yeah. side of the graves so That's overall true. i just don't feel like like it's going to work out that well you also have the smoke screen to deny her even yeah exactly exactly that blindness that coming out from that pretty strong kind of use that maybe to deny the true damage that comes out from camille's q kind of keep yourself out of harm's way but we will have to see how that kind of ends up working out but overall just looking at the uh, team comps here i'm sure people in the chat they want to know who to put their points on who should they predict for what do you think mm. I like the careful that the side of TTMP throughout this game with the mm. swing in the support bo uh, position. One thing that I didn't like a lot with the la in the last game was the Leona, much more so the fact that the Leona was not playing around the pain, and that was why, why we saw so much pressure in the bot lane. Mm. So if this time around this uh, uh, swing that has actually range, that can play around much better with the uh, Vayne, can get 
control over the Seraphine. It's going to be actually be the Seraphine mid lane and the Luke's bot lane. So I feel like it's even better for the Swain, in, mm. in all honesty. So I feel like the, the side of TTMP has actually a really nice composition to bring around with. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, though, you got to be careful, though, with that Lux, because, I mean, it's just too many times it's happened where you get hit by just the Lux Q and you know you're done. Yeah. You, you see the E coming, <laughs> you see true. the R coming, and it's like, it's all over. You are just absolutely done here. So it's going to be interesting to see how they play around things. And also, Hextech Ultimatum as well. They have so much lockdown coming out from the Nameless, right? You've got the Camille Hextech Ultimatum. You've got Jarvan's Cataclysm. You've got the Seraphine Ultimate. You've got the Lux Q, right? So just so much easy yeah. coming out time around they're really realizing from that last game like they were just kind of lacking a bit of that cc ability that came out from the side of ttmp and i think that if they can kind of you know stabilize that early game like we were talking about right do a little bit better and not kind of misstep and fall for the same kind of mistakes they should be a lot better this time around yeah i feel like the, their composition certainly throws something into play that is just executing through team fighting something that i feel like Nameless certainly is capable of pulling off. And if mm. you just have to depend on hitting your ultimates and winning the team fight immediately, I feel like that's something that they can certainly pull off. Yeah, definitely. You know what? I'm gonna I'm just I'm gonna be that guy. I'm gonna just go with it. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that uh, I'm gonna okay. just say that Nameless is taking this one home. I think if they because I mean they definitely did show us, right? They were also slowly starting to come back in the last game. Obviously, you know, like we we're saying, a few mistakes here and there kind of screwed them up, right? Some mispositioning, yep. some some calls were not made correctly there. So if they can just kind of, you know focus on that stabilize that early game as well not fall behind so much they definitely have a shot uh, to stay in this competition that being said though honestly there is really only one way to find out if anything that i just said is even true and that's to just get on the rift so we'll throw it to a quick break and when we're back we'll be on the rift for game number two
and gentlemen, we are back on the Rift. Game 2 is about to get underway. TTMP need to get one more dub if they want to secure themselves the win tonight. However, Nameless Asylum is not going to make it easy for them. And once again, there it is. Yeah, there it is. Once again, now we're finally getting that kind of aggressive start that we've been looking for. But it's looking at me like beat monkey chicks. Oh. I have an idea that's going down. Needs to be careful. Oh. No, he's going to sidestep both. He's going to flash, dude. Oh my god, he dodges certain death. At least that's the flash out though already from Beat Monkey. Yeah. Yeah, but at least covering the fact that they all missed <laughs> this is he. But yeah, it's still blowing out the flash. So at least it's one win. It does mean that if the Jarvan goes for a level two gank, which he can go for even though he's not starting on the red side, they can just if they ever hit the bind on the looks, he's essentially dead, in my yeah. opinion. So that that's at least a good positive to look forward to. Yeah, I definitely. I didn't know that his skin does that. Yeah, that's something already. So that is going to be the flash out. Going to be up in four more minutes. That being said, though, once again, we're seeing kind of like a duo bot lane start here, right? Going to get some pathing, almost like up into that mid to top lane. Trying to get those top laners ahead. That way they can kind of focus on this bot lane. However, if you are on the side of a nameless, what do you think they got to do this time around, man? I think try and put pressure once again on the bot lane. Try and put this pain as down as they can. Try and put this bane as down as they can. Try and make them. Yeah, look, the Jar Dude, is already. they're already looking to put him down. Indeed, the flag and drag coming through, but it's not really going to find anything. Not the right wave state to make that happen. Bergen not quite going to hit the binding. And so overall, not much going to come out of that one. Yeah, nice rates by you know, Jackie Love. He's essentially 2v1 them. Yeah, he did a lot of damage there. That lethal tempo, that extra range coming out as well, definitely hurts quite a bit. Yeah, also Jarvan still was still down there a little bit, so they are actually not hitting level 2 with the minions that they had previously. They took mm -hmm. time hitting level 2. Oh, indeed, they did. A lot of damage coming out, though. Bergen does need to be careful here. That was a close one, so he's going to have to pop a potion there. And so will Falte. That's already no more potions up for them to utilize. That being said, though, I do see already in that inventory of the Swin stopwatch actually coming out. We're gonna see if that comes into play. And speaking of coming into play here, RJ oh. is gonna have to flash, but it's still gonna get rooted. Very nice E coming out from Inferno. Is this gonna be the first blood? No, sir, it will not be. Backlash, looking to turn this thing around. The beat drop, away, the high note does connect. Oh, can he get this? The flash coming out? No, it's gonna fit at the flash from Inferno though, but won't quite find the kill. Yeah, but Inferno going way too aggressive. If he had Shroud, I can understand why he's going that aggressive. But level two, you don't deal that much damage. <laughs> you don't have a lot of... Uh, oh, wait. Oh, the root does connect. Can't quite pull him in, though. Doesn't have the sure. vision there. So Bergen dodging the bullet there, dodging the demonic grasp. Dare I say once again, we'll go with that. Yeah, I think it is demonic grasp, I feel. So, yeah. So getting that that hit down. Oh, wait. Oh, and with the high note, but the Shroud will protect Inferno. Is going to be able to recall. That being said, though, Hextech Dragon will be the first one on the map, actually. It's going to be up in a minute no. and 20. <laughs> that means we potentially get a cloud. <laughs> yeah, cloud Soul, let's go. <laughs> hype, hype. Yeah, yeah no Hextech Soul, unfortunately. I don't know if we're ever going to get one of those these times around. Big sad. Guess we'll have to take this to game three to get one there. Yeah. It's the best bed. Nameless, we believe in you. <laughs> exactly. Nameless, nameless, we trust. Now, this time around, this would be a perfect time for Backlash to actually get down there again. But, unfortunately, he's a little occupied with the Raptors up in that top part of the jungle there. So, nothing quite going to come out of it. And, overall, just once again, certified chill time, really. Some trading going out. Not hope. I did say that uh, he was going to have a bit of a better time here against Cake. I was a little worried for Cake. And we're seeing it right now with just the trading coming out. Not hope. It's just able to harass so much with that extra range that he's got. But we do see both junglers are slowly rotating up into the top lane, so we might just see a bit of a scuffle of directed cam oh, on got hit. Take a look. But in that ball and not Jackie Love. Damn, that was a lot of damage coming out. Dick and yeah. taken quite low. It needs to be careful. Oh my god, it's just that four man up in that top. I'm waiting for the camera to pan up there, but it does not want to. There we go. Fine. Oh. Does flag and drag over the wall backslash was quite close to going down there. Needs to be careful. That's a lot of damage coming out from not hope as well. Yeah, that, like the early levels from the graves are quite good. So yeah. that damage that he's able to get down is nothing to scoff at. Indeed. Oh, big Inferno. shield coming out though from RJ Hoff. He keeping him alive there as Inferno was able to hit the E, was able to hit the five point strike and do quite a bit of damage. Yeah, and those traits are going to become much more important the more damage that Inferno gets because it's going to become easier to be able to solo kill <laughs> RJ Hoffy. Like you, you do expect that coming from the Akali. 
and these lanes are going to get pushed and pushed from the side of TTMP. Apart from maybe the bot lane, which have a, a Lux and an Estro, I feel like each lane will be able to get pushed easily. Yeah, definitely. Cake, he's kind of stuck in this limbo once again where he really can't do much in the top lane. Just kind of has to form. No. Not Hope taking some tower shots, unfortunately, because of that scatter of the shotgun accidentally hitting Cake. So that does get him a bit lower. However, Cake realizing that I don't think there's much he can do here at the moment. He's going to try and pick up go the arm. Here, yeah. Oh, he does hook shot into the smoke screen. He's looking to get that kill. Can he get it? Yeah. He doesn't have to reload, but he gets the ultimate out. Takes him out. And now they're oh, looking so to do the holds. same thing to RJ Hoffy in this mid lane here. Hit him with the ultimate. Shuriken flip doesn't quite connect, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. The five point strike seals the deal. And he goes down. Yeah, and it's a play that was known. They had the already Hobby had a ward in the push. You have to play much more safe. You have to respect her because we see the Jarvan and the bot lane coming in, but they were actually so far away. They realized the play was going on when they were essentially on the middle of the river. So they were, there was no chance that they can get there before RD Hobby dies. She dies, and then it's easy to disengage from the Jar the Sack and the Akali. And in comparison, now the bot lane, the set the Bane and the um, and the swing Wait. has a free time just pushing the wave. They they are winning once again in the map because of the lack of response from the side of Nameless. Yeah, I've definitely already seen them kind of fall into those early mistakes, those early ways that we were talking about from game one here. Exactly what we do not want to see as we are seeing uh, Beat Monkey Cheese and Not Jackie Love are probably going to get this first plating here. Not much that Fall Take can do without his trusty support. Backslash looking to try and find some of that mid lane, but can't quite find anything. I'm going to roam up into this top instead, maybe move up there, see if it's some free real estate up in there. But Cake, he's done taking the abuse. Can't quite dope. get that Q damage. That's true. He does have the ultimate. Couldn't quite get that Q true damage off, though. Oh, not hope no. able to keep the range, though. But here comes Backslash. The flag and drag is going to knock him up. Is he going to use the Cataclysm? Doesn't quite have it. Does hit the hook shot, though. He shouldn't need that and that alone and he will get not hope as well not hope putting up a great fight though doing quite a bit of damage but at the end of the day not quite enough yeah they do kill the graves after he teleported back into the lane which means that he does he's going to lose quite a bit of cs and the advantage that he had accrued is no longer that important the camille gets the kill they are taking away cs from him and the wave Okay, no, the wave is actually in a good spot for the Graves. Oh! Yeah, Ignite does come out of Fall Tip, but Beat Monkey Jinx does need to flash to get away there. A bit more damage coming out than he expected. Fall Tip and Bergen both just doing so much damage. The Petrusha Barrage not quite going to hit the target, but we'll clear out quite a few minions and reset the wave here. But <laughs> give me a cup twice. He's coming in again for one of those long con ganks at this point. Yeah, I mean, we're, we know we're reminded of the speed sticks. <laughs> yeah, this man is determined to get these kind of ganks off. I mean, hell, we can even see that Falta did take the back. Bergen's just going to chill under the tower. But I'm telling you right now, there's no way. Give me a cup twice. We'll move, bro. He's he's there to chill for a minute. Oh, no way. He's actually moving. He's learned no, from game one. Give me a cup. <laughs> I, we believe in you. Yeah, we did. Backslash lol. Oh. Not sure if he can go in and take this one. Gonna wait for Gimme a Cup twice to actually kind of separate himself and maybe move in. Oh, he's not even gonna move in. He just wants to take to out Not Jackie yeah. Love. Yeah, he wants this vein. Flag and drag. Not quite gonna knock up. Hit him with the Cataclysm, but a very nicely timed flash to get him out of there. Sidestepping the Lux Salt as well. And Vayne's just like, uh, yeah, later. Yeah, quite honestly, I really don't like that the Bane is stuck so long in that position. You just mm. needed to back after that point because now the back timing for her was a little bit delayed. She's uh, potentially going to lose a little bit of this wave if the minions don't crash. She's trying to rush uh, as, far as, as fast as she can, but she may lose a little bit of that CS, which is not ideal with the Bane. Yeah, definitely not what you want to be seeing there. Now, this dragon has been up for quite a bit, I won't lie. It's already nine minutes in, and we still haven't Nobody seen anyone even... Dragon. Yeah, no one wants it right now. We haven't even seen anyone try and take it at the moment. But it's as I say that, they're like, hey. okay, we hear you, bro. Let's go ahead and get it here. Backslash, RJ, Falte, and Bergen all on this dragon. Teaming up a little, a little up there, I say, kind of like team building exercise, and they take out that first dragon. Okay, we're not getting a clot, so thank God. <laughs> yeah, they heard that we wanted a level one, they pulled a level one. They heard we wanted the Drake, <laughs> they went for the Drake. Now, we want to see a solo kill in top lane. <laughs> Let's hope it happens. Let's make it happen, please. Can we get a solo kill on top lane, please? Oh, the director's can does cut up yeah. to that top. Yo, are we actually? No, okay. If we, maybe we might just see it here. The hookshot does connect quite a bit of damage coming out. 
cake. Needs to be careful. Trade in though, overall. Not that much gonna come out of it. Inferno does hit the shuriken flip. Five point strike doing so much damage. That is disgusting. This is why I hate Akali, to say the least. Yeah, she's just, she kind of embodies the anti-fun part of playing the game, in my <laughs> opinion. Like, she's, it, it, it's not that she's unbalanced, it's just that there's so many parts of her kit that you really don't respect, don't like. Yeah, absolutely. That being said, though, I'm sure Cake does not like being shoved under his own turret right here. Not much he can do, just trying to get this farm going while not hope. Shoving in, realizing something's going down oh, as we're no, about to hope. be a bit of a scuffle here. Backslash. That ward just spotting him out, but give me a cup twice. <laughs> He's looking to get this. I think they know. Hong Kong gang. I think he might just know. Indeed, we'll have to wait and see. Wow, that was a lot of damage coming up from the heat from Bergen. Oh no, he's going and they have no clue. They don't know. Cake does get knocked up. Gonna get hit with the oh, root ball. Can't quite hook shot away. Is he gonna get out? Hashtag ultimatum, but I don't think that's Here's enough. It does come out. Here's a Kali indeed. Aww. And there goes Backslash. He's gone and out for the count. They will pop the Zack pass and Encore oh, gets oh. used as well. Is that the move though? Nothing quite gonna come out of that. They go for the dive? They might just go for the dive here indeed. RJ with a very nice flash. They oh, they fail, but it doesn't matter. They still yeah. get the kill. It worked out at the end, and that's what matters. So we yeah. didn't hit the solo kill mark, but there was a play in top lane. So yeah. we're close. Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll take that. I'll definitely take that. Overall, a nice big scuff on that top lane. We do see that in the bot lane. Bergen and Falte were able to pick up their first play. They're surprised they didn't stay and try and maybe get a second one. But they are just going to go ahead, hit that back. They don't really have any vision on any of the members of TTS. So, you know, that's probably the move. Yeah, and they really don't need to commit so hard for that second plate, particularly because if they stuck too long, Bane with uh, with items is going to come back, same with the Swain. So if they get an opportunity to kill you, I think that you don't really want to take that. But looking immediately at TTMP, once again, we're seeing a really nice way of playing where they are going for one side of the map and the other side just respects and tries and stays safe. They don't commit, they don't, they don't try and pull anything fancy, they just farm and allow the other side of the map to keep on winning. Yeah, absolutely. But once again, CTMP is looking pretty dominant at the moment, being 5-1. The one saving grace, solace, dare I say, is the dragon in the pockets of Nameless, but they're going to have to step it up if they want to get ahead in this match. Oh. Oh my Guess god, yo, back. <laughs> back again, it's gave me a cup twice, looking to jump in here, he's charging up, he's gonna send the long con, oh, no. <laughs> what? <laughs> Monkey cheese does get taken out though, that's what I was talking about man, you get hit by that Q, you get hit by the E, and it's all over, oh no, give me a cup twice, no way, they're gonna turn this thing around, a very nice binding, we'll take, I'm not Jackie Love, and meanwhile, in that top lane, a couple going down. Cataclysm actually going oh. down. A flash up will give me a couple twice. I did. Oh, Inferno opting to go in. Hits with the ultimate. We'll get one, but goes down in return. And now give me a cup twice. I don't know. This one was the this. move. I don't know. You might just win this, actually. Don't count him out just yet. One more hit. But no, sir. You are not going to get it. I told you, he doesn't win that. Yeah, that is frustrating to say the least, bro. Some keycaps are definitely falling on the floor after that one. And now Not Hope looking to get some revenge as well here. Can he get it though? So not quite. Hookshot gonna miss. Ultimate does come out, but it's not quite enough. Not Hope. He's just gonna chase down. Hextech Ultimate comes out. That's, oh, the shell though. No, not gonna be enough. Not Hope just hits him with the thumbs up and just keeps on farming. Yeah, and with that at least taking back a little bit of the gold that they gave away, but with the play that happened bot lane, Serving was just left alone in top lane, in mid lane, she got a couple of plates. Oh, backslash. Oh, backslash, flagging it's drag. Fun. Yeah, it's just gonna clear in this wave. Doesn't want that turret to go down just yet, gonna do what he can to just protect. And with that, turret plates are down. An important lead, or a lead for the side of TTMP, but they kind of gave away a lot of their lead with that play in bot lane. Because yeah. they, they were much more ahead than this. Yeah, absolutely. And now it's like we were literally just at what, like 4 1, something like that. Now we're at 7 5 already. So things are starting to go into the favor of Nameless. And I mean, this is kind of something we saw before, right? We saw that in game one as well. It's like the early game wasn't looking too hot. And then slowly but surely, we saw Nameless like kind of reel their way back into the match. Yeah. That being said, though, this time around, TTMP did not want that to happen at all. Gonna go ahead, grab themselves the drag. And the side of Nameless is like, you know what? Go ahead, you can have it. We'll get this Rift Herald instead. 
Yeah, and I feel like in the previous game we didn't have referrals, if I'm not wrong. Like, yeah. it wasn't. Oh, Ooh, Encore does connect. Not quite close enough to the back one of the turret. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> turret does go down and not, not hope. Can just do what he wants with cake here. Oh, no, I had nowhere for cake to go, healing quite a bit. Not hope, it's just running just him kill. down just a little more damage needed. There we go, gets the he kill. Just out attacked, he just yeah. walked in and out attacked, not even having ultimate. Oh, Jack Love Bergen. Oh my god, hits him with the full combo. And come on, that was just overkill. Faulty did not need to use the true shot barrage, but wanted to make sure they get the kill regardless and get it. He did. And realistically, it's funny to me because this game actually, not Jackie Love should have taken cleanse, <laughs> and instead it <laughs> goes for the heal. And the last game, it would have rented more to have something else apart from the cleanse, and he took the cleanse. So, yeah. funny enough. That's oh. true. That being said, the RD oh. off, he needs to be quite careful here. The five point strike, but did hit him with the double beat drop, so that push will be stopped from Inferno. Did you feel he got a flush, so yeah. win in, yeah. in some sense, like in exactly. 63 seconds, she's going to go back in and kill the Seraphine without a flash. <laughs> exactly, we'll have to wait for that one a little bit longer. That being said, though, we are getting a Mountain Soul, and that will be up in 3 minutes 40. So, we're going to have to see how both teams try to play around that. And now it's back to just a little bit more chill time. Yeah, not really, oh, unless... Oh, never mind, there will be no chilling for you, because RJ <laughs> Hoppy is going to be just taken out like it's nothing. Our, oh my god, Backslash did try to get in there, see if he can make something happen. He was nothing. flashed. <laughs> yeah, he, he was really hoping to try and save RJ, but just nothing he could do there. Yeah, that play that, that play shows a little bit still of the back to the DR in a sense with some of those mm. plays. Like I feel like the bot lane really is stepping up, Faulty and Birkin getting so much done down there to just put themselves in a really comfortable spot. But on the other on the other side of the map, the reaction and the plays that give me a cop and the soul laners are able to pull off are simply not being respawned correctly mm. by the side of Nameless Asylum. Yeah, no, I feel like we're definitely gonna have to wait and see kind of when these team fights come around, right? It's really gonna come down to Bergen and Falte, what they can do. Cause I mean, the two of them in comparison to the rest of their team are doing incredibly well, right? 3-0 on Bergen, 2-0 on Falte, both have all right, well, okay, Bergen doesn't have his first item quite yet, but he's definitely getting there. Soon. Getting close. Well, yeah, soon, while Falte already does have that Essence Reaver. So once these fights kind of go down, it's really going to come down to kind of dig hit those skill shots and just really how they look to move around the fight. Maybe a little too dependent on the skill shots, just because if they don't hit it, it essentially <laughs> will not do damage. Yeah. But uh, like you're pointing out, at least the part, the, part that are, the part of the map that is ahead is the one that has to heal the skill shots and it, it can spam skill shots at that so you can just continuously spam and get damage done because of the champions you're playing yeah that's true that's definitely true we do see that in my name Mune as well it's looking to be built sooner than later with that tier of the goddess within Faulty's kit that being said though so, okay give me a cup twice we get poked a little bit not really much going down right now both teams kind of looking for that sort of uh that engagement really that they can find and wow, a lot of damage coming up from Keg here, but not hope healing up quite a bit with that Eclipse. He is five and one, does have that anti-heal as well, has the hull breaker. So he's definitely, he's sitting pretty right now. Yeah, and I'm actually, I would have been much more of a fan of not hope taking not the the um, the clips, but instead just going for the, the shield bow. I feel like with that, you can't keep on speed pushing. Oh, Ooh, that means well. oh, quite a big push coming out Inferno. Being pretty damn low, does hit the shuriken flip and we'll take him out with the- oh, oh so my god, the encore! That was huge! So many people being taunted, but it does not matter. Inferno does so much damage. They pick up two kills per nil. Backslash and Bergen will both fall. They're <coughs> oh, excuse me. Oh god. <laughs> They're trying to kill me too. Don't do not do it, please. I'm just a caster. Uh, the Rift Hill was able to take out that tier 1 turret, oh, however, and now Cake looking to take out Not Hope, but there is oh, no hope for you. I'm afraid Hexam Ultimatum does come down and he is just gone. Hey, looking at the bright side, this was closer than maybe we would have expected with the difference yeah, between true. Cake and that's Not true. Hope right now. So, at least something to look forward to. But immediately going for that bot lane play, I love the play from the side of TTMP. They needed to shut down this bot lane a little bit. They went in the timing of the Herald, so even though the turret is killed, you get two important kills and one shutdown at that in the form of the uh, looks. So, overall, great play, great timing, and they get another turret topside. So, overall, god lead in all, in all of the map. Yeah, definitely. It's just so much gold going into the pocket of Not Hope. Has that juicy shutdown on him. That's definitely something they're going to want to cash in. They're also going to want to cash in the dragon that's up, though, right now. So we're definitely going to see a bit of a scuffle. Not, not Hope 
does have TP. So if he really needs to, he can just TP. But honestly, oh, he's actually, yeah, he's actually going to just go ahead and back, grab another item, and then most likely kind of TP into that fight here. You see both teams really just looking for that opening, trying to get that initial pick that allows them to have that one-man advantage. And they might just find it oh. here. Looking to go in here, not quite going to hit oh, anything. But, oh, got to go gold and dodge almost everything. No way, Cheeks, just like that. He baits out so here many of comes. his shots. And here comes the Encore, yeah. though, going to hit three-man. But it doesn't matter. Cataclysm into Jack his up. own death, pretty much. Bergen going to go down as well. Cake does pick up one. Inferno gets one as well, though. But I don't know if they can quite win this thing. Vaulted taking so much damage. Give me a it's going to go down. Give me a cup twice. No way, dude. Give him two kills, he's saying. Because he's going to pick up that double kill. Very nicely done. Whoever tells me that tanks don't deal damage needs to <laughs> shut up because that was a 2v1 that he won effectively. The Bane died so quickly in that fight. She survived, but she died quite quickly in that fight. They are now able to get this dragon. And I do want to give a lot of credit to the teleport place. First, not hope to ping onto the bottom lane to help with the push of the sack that just run forward. And with, it, with him being a tank, it wasn't hard for him to just commit to play. And then the second teleport from Inferno onto the ward uh, in the tri-bush, or not tri-bush, the pixel bush in the river to set up for anyone that was mispositioning. And the looks and the surfing ended up being mispositioned, so she yeah. just took advantage of that, killed them easily, and the fight just turned immediately in favor of the side of TTMP, even though it was kind of separated. You yeah, know, we saw right when RJ pulled up with the Encore, it was just way too late already. Backslash was so incredibly low, hits that Cataclysm, but goes down regardless. And just overall, it was just an absolute bloodbath. And with that, TTMP are looking to just absolutely dominate game two as well, looking to take this 2-0 win home. Yeah, they have so much power in the solo lanes. They have so much power in their jungle as well. And yes, the Bane is not the strongest right now, but she's skilling, so she will get there eventually. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, with the rest of her team so fed ahead, she can really just sit back, just chill, do a lot of them, do do quite a bit of damage regardless with those silver bolt procs, try and pick up a kill here and there. And with that, kind of get himself back into the game here while the side of Nameless really needs to start finding some picks for pretty much everyone on their team if they want to stay within this game. Yeah, and now that you pointed out, I, I would like to try and comment on how Nameless wins because there's chance for them, like you're pointing out. Like, mm. if they can get good picks, if they can play around certain players, they certainly can put themselves back into this game, like we saw them trying to do in the previous game. They have to play around, particularly the Camille, because of her ultimate. Like, if, she, if you can utilize the Hexag ultimatum, try and lock someone down and kill her and kill that person, it's going to be much more easy to try and come back into this game because playing around the Ezreal and the Dukes, although it's favorable, they are squishy, so they are easy to kill. Yeah, definitely. We, I mean, we've been seeing it as well. The moment that gave me a cup twice or Inferno are able to get their hands on them, it's just lights out for them. Like just, we just even saw this in that last dragon fight itself. So it is going to be quite tricky for the side of Nameless to come back from this one. But there is definitely, if there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. Oh, like, oh Lord, and there's also a will so to nice. take them out. That was nice indeed. Give me a cup oh. twice. Looking to take him out. Not Jackie Love. He can he can thank his lucky stars and the shield bow that he's alive. Bergen, not so much though, because he is gonna go down. Meanwhile, that oh, ball in not a hold will actually finally meet his maker. Shut There's that down. thousand gold shutdown going into the hands of Backslash. And now Falte. They're looking to give him the same treatment. Is he gonna get a double here? He might just get a double. He's gonna go in. He's gonna or hit. Not. Of course, too much CC coming out. Give me a cup twice healing he quite so a much bit. Shield. But it doesn't matter. They're gonna park proc his passive. And he will finally go down. Yeah, committing way too hard for this Ezreal. I like the initial play, but then they committed way too hard. The not hope was being collapsed on. He has damage, but he's not quite survive. Doesn't have quite survivability with this kind of build. Hmm. And he's just on his target. We talked about this with the Camille. If you go with the Camille Hexic Ultimatum, you just lock someone down in position. And it's easier to kill them. And I like they went for the Graves because there was a thousand gold shutdown. I'm not sure who it went to. But it was so flat. possible. Okay, yeah, important that... Oh. <laughs> oh, Lord, and Gold's about to go into the hands of Inferno here. Once he takes out Cake, just needs to hit yeah. a little bit more. He will get it indeed. And that's some Gold going into the hands of Inferno. Can't say it's probably that much seeing as Cake is 2 and 7. Yeah, it's, it's probably not quite high, but... <laughs> it's like a little cannon minion, but, you know, Gold is Gold. <laughs> we'll take it. <laughs> yeah, it does stop the... 
another potential comeback, but it doesn't stop the, K the Kakaneo from getting back gold and potentially just putting himself back into the game. I think that's still important to deny the Camille because she's going to be an important factor later on in the game as well. Yeah, definitely. I just noticed, though, I'm a little surprised actually, looking at the trinket items from the side here of... Uh... Nameless, they have three far, far sight alterations, and then two I like that. Not a single person, only the only people that have actual wards would just be Bergen, right, with that ward item. So that already they realizing that they need to get this vision down, and they really cannot afford to face check any of these bushes these days with Inferno lurking around every single corner, not hope as well, and hell even beat yeah. Monkey Cheeks. So that's definitely nice to see. That being said, though, Mountain Drake is up in 45. Yeah, and it, the side of TTMP already poised to be able to get it. Not all, but do, just doesn't care about who's in front of him. He's just split pushing. <laughs> yeah, he does not care indeed. Got that hole breaker. Got that LDR. He has that eclipse. I mean, he's just absolutely set. Is he's all in beefed up. Yeah, that's true. He is beefed up. And now Fault then oh, needs to be careful. Arcane oh, shake, but it stun. doesn't matter. They got the stun indeed, and they're about to get the kill. Down he goes. That's another kill into the hands of not Jackie Love. Look at the not hope. Dude. He's just... He's running up and hitting the turret. He does not care, bro. He built himself to split push and he's doing just that. Yep, absolutely. Dude, so much damage to that turret. And now Mountain Drake is up. Oh, they're are they just gonna go okay, I was about to say, are they going for Baron? I was a little confused. They're not Bane can do it. Yeah, oh. that's true. Not hope though. I don't know if he can quite do this though. Doing quite a lot of damage. Cataclysm does come out. Needs to be careful. They're doing quite a bit of damage to backslash. Oh. Gonna flash over the wall, but it won't be any good. Not hope. This thing goes and made him lock some down. It just shreds him. Oh, that tree comes out. Bye -bye. But now Bergen, bit of a bad spot. Needs to hit something, but nothing quite gonna connect. Will go down. And now Cheeks, the only man standing right there. Actually, no, Inferno is there as well. Cake can't quite hit anything onto Inferno. Oh. Does get a stun, though. The Encore does connect, and that's putting Inferno out of the Inferno fight. Here, Needs yeah. to go gold. They might just be able to get him, though. Cake incredibly low. The <laughs> Demonic Ascension going to take him out. Baron was taken, but it's looking like the Vayne will be one of the few that keeps it. RJ Hoffy is about to go down. Did they get him, though. They're just chasing him. Oh, oh he can Inferno. Inferno, no! Is going to flash and get the kill. And just like that, that's pretty much a full wipe while wow, giving me a cup twice and not Jackie Love. We're up top grabbing Baron. And they also get the dragon as well because of the chaos <laughs> oh and everyone God. dying. They just go from objective to objective and get the and get both really nicely done by TTMP. And that fight bot lane, I like the attempt. I dislike the way that it was executed because you're lacking quite a lot of damage, thinking that yeah. the Jarban that is one on five and the surfing that is so on four, at, at least at that point, can kill the graves like that. So it was just an easy attempt to just respond to play and easily counter it from the side of TTMP. Yeah, once again, right, I mean, but we, the thing is, we were literally talking about how you need to be playing around this Camilla. I mean, we saw it there once again, right, the moment that he was able to pop the Hextech Ultimatum, lock down the Graves, hit him with a Q, just absolutely decimated yeah. him, right? But they just, they didn't wait for that. They were like, now nah, we got this, we'll send the two men after him, and then it's just two deaths, and you're two men down, and now things are not looking good for you. Exactly, the timings that they are playing with just simply seem a little bit too disconnected from the rest of the team and they need to play much better around that because even with three level differences, the uh, three level difference like you pointed out, the Camille was able to kill the Graves. He, yeah. Namely he was slow, but he still was able she still was able to kill her. So you need to play around this much more and you need to use the Hexic Ultimaten much more effectively as well. Yeah, absolutely. And time to do that is running out. However, the side of TTMP is on soul point, and that next drag will be up in 3 minutes and 50 seconds. They do have that barrier buff, giving them a lot of siege potential. And you can just see on the map, there's so much pressure coming from every single lane right now. Inferno in that top, pushing that top turret. You've got our boy uh, not hope in that bot lane looking to put apply some pressure there and the rest is kind of you have that three one one kind of split right just the usual kind of going on looking like that mid tier two is going to in fact go down one more can a shot should do it yes so it will go down nothing quite they can do there things are not looking good yeah the the only oh wait Ooh, things might just look a little bit better though if they can take out not jackie love you're incredibly oh, no, no, low no. And with the Encore, no, it's not quite going to connect. Bergen in a bit of a bad spot. Oh my god, just gets absolutely deleted. Monkey Cheeks will have to go gold the rest of the squad is here. Down goes RJ. Down goes Black Slide. Back Slide. <laughs> not Black Slide. And now Cake and Fawthon are the only ones that can hold this turret. This might just be it. Inferno looking to go in. Was able to pop the crown with the Rocket Belt. Down goes the Tier 3. 
Down goes the inhibitor now as well, looking to get the Nexus turrets as well. The revive times are still incredibly high, so they might be able to pull it off here. Can Cake make anything oh. happen? I think not. Gonna get knocked down here. Maybe. It's just everything going down. Cake so oh. low. Hexagon to middle. It will go down though. Full top. Last man standing. One more Nexus turret on his name. Can he oh, make no. something happen? He can't get a single kill here. I don't think anything is gonna come out of this one. Lux is back. Gonna get one kill. Can they make something else happen? The Nexus is in. Explodes. You need to do something here and now. Full to come on, brother. Can't quite get anything though it's the play save <laughs> yeah, indeed they're not gonna get give me a cup twice either and they are gonna go ahead and leave ttmp getting so much out of that push however only lose one man and now I, 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 if, if they get one more pick i think this thing might just be over yeah they, they just they don't even need a pick if everyone is focused on one side not hope finishes the game alone <laughs> so <laughs> it's just that kind of situation and the wor or one of the saddest parts at least for me for the side of nameless uh, of nameless is that even if they get kills here they don't get anything no one is in position to get turrets <laughs> upside there's no objectives so just a couple of kills and that's it yeah, things not looking too good. All the waves right now are not in very favorable positions. A lot of pressure onto Nameless right now. They need to make something happen. They need to start relieving some of this pressure that is upon them. But the side of TTMP is not going to make it easy for them. We already see Inferno clearing out some vision, looking to set up here to try and get an easy little pick for himself, for his team, so that they can make something happen out of that. There we see. I mean, the whole team, they're just, even, even to roam together, they're scared to kind of push these bushes because they know that the moment any of them get caught out it is just over and here we go this might just be the final push ladies and gentlemen we've got the four men looking to push in here give me a cup twice lagging a bit behind gonna have to wait for him to pull up the super minion is in tow and they're looking to march onto the nexus here gotta make something happen <laughs> oh my god so much damage coming out onto bergen ultimate comes out won't quite find anything though cake yeah, that sick ultimatum is gonna go down that's a double kill falta it's gonna go down though as well <laughs> but just like that the nexus is taking so much damage they're being pushed into their own spawn and that's it ladies and gentlemen oh come on they're oh. just bming now they're yeah. trying to get the kills there we go ladies and gentlemen ttmp take game two and take this series yeah in a really nice way they play that game as well as they could they have some fallacies here and there they failed some ganks but yeah. still the outcome was the same they played really well through their strong side and through their weak side like we saw in the last game last game it was bottling the strong side toppling the weak side this time around it was the opposite but still playing really effectively and particularly give me a cup twice waiting in the bush for three minutes <laughs> is not something i approve but if it works out it, it ends up netting you an important advantage so credit it's, it's for that brain, bro it's that big brain <laughs> yeah. that my man was rewarded for his patience right we can see if he's sitting in that bush that for true. so long and i mean hey it worked out so you know what i'm not gonna say nothing i can't complain they got the dub so hey it worked out very nicely played to him. That being said, though, <sighs> Nameless definitely put up a bit of a better fight in game one. Game two, things just really started crumbling. A little sad to see because the bot lane of Nameless was doing incredibly well up yeah. until they had to start facing off with people like Not Hope, who were doing incredibly well as well for themselves. Yeah, I feel like they had the correct mindset this time around. They were trying to push their advantage, and the team was trying to play through that advantage. But I feel like at the point where they were trying to play through that advantage, it was kind of doom already. The Akali was so far ahead. Hope yeah. was just pushing endlessly. And the bot lane wasn't really that far behind in a sense that they couldn't just try and answer back. The Swain became an actual champion later on with the... Um, with the Leandris. So mm. at the end of the day, they had opportunities. They didn't capitalize on them, but I feel like the building is something that I, I can see them trying to play through in the future. And yeah. if they don't fall behind like they did in both games, like they have good enough answers sometimes to pull back into this game. Yeah, into the game. Yeah, no, definitely, right? I mean, we definitely saw that in game one. Game two, not quite so much. And that probably also has to do with just the states that some of these other lanes were in in comparison yeah. to game one. But regardless, Nameless still put up a very good fight. However, TTMP, man, they just dominated today. They came out on top, and that is going to be it for today. A very nice. Fortunately, we don't get that kind of 2 1 that we were looking for. No extended. You lied to me, man. No extended yeah, game thought, this time I around, bro. We, were getting that. <laughs> we do indeed will not be getting it this time around. Maybe next week we'll have to see. But with that being said, that is going to be it for tonight. TDS, thanks so much again for joining me tonight, man. It is oh, always a pleasure. pleasure, brother. Yeah, straight up, man. And uh, with that, hope you guys enjoyed, and we hope to see you guys next week. Take care.